All right, so I just finished an amazing workout and I had a couple of thoughts that I think are things that nobody else ever talks about. Like there's so many other channels on YouTube, like self-improvement stuff, but none of them are talking about this. This is some of the best advice that I've ever thought of and I feel like I literally captured magic in a bottle or, or lightning or whatever they call it. You know, like lightning in a bottle, whatever the saying is, okay? I need to speak it into a camera right now before I forget it. This could be the difference between you achieving your biggest goals, your biggest dreams, and being stuck in the exact same position as you are now, five years from now. Let me ask you a question, bro. One, two, five years from now, would you rather be where you want to be or right here? Yeah, that's what I thought. So right away, you click on this video, right? You think, oh, he's just gonna say, you know, like, three tips to feel good or do a hundred push-ups or you know whatever but no it's not going to be one of those videos this one's going to go a lot deeper and i think that this one is going to help three types of people one it's going to help people that don't have good habits and they're looking for motivation this is probably the biggest group this is the majority the second group people that do have good habits but they're still feeling kind of bad and they're kind of missing the point of what I'm about to explain to you. So like you're doing the right things, but you're just not getting the results that you think you should. And you're running out of options, bro. And the third group is for people that are kind of in between, you know, like they work out sometimes, sometimes they don't, but they just kind of like, they go in, in between, right? They, they lack the motivation and they feel kind of behind in life, right? Now, it's very important that you actually watch this video and give it your full attention. There aren't gonna be any edits. So if you've made it this far, Congrats, bro. Most people have already clicked off. Good. Fuck those guys. They're losers. They're worms. They're literal cockroaches. They can't even make it through a video. Of course they're going to live a loser life, right? So congrats that you made it this far is what I'm saying, basically. <laughs> I'm going to give you a quick story about when I was a kid so that you kind of get what I'm going to get to. This is like a big picture video, bro. Like I said, this is some life-changing shit, okay? And you're gonna relate with this because this video was recommended to you for a reason. This was not an accident, bro. I promise you, this is not an accident that you're watching this right now. Ever since I was a kid, I was an overthinker. My mind would go at like 100 miles per hour, just super fast, right? And when you're an overthinker, it limits your ability to be present in the moment. You're unable to like, you know, like enjoy a conversation or an activity. And you feel like people are looking at you or like they're thinking about you, like thinking bad things about you. Sometimes every movement you do, it feels like the wrong thing, right? Like, why are they looking at me that way? Like, did I say something wrong? Did, oh, fuck, they're judging me. They think I'm dumb. And because of this, what ends up happening is that you don't actually do anything because you're so worried of people thinking the wrong thing about you that you don't do anything at all. In your eyes, it's the wrong thing. Now, because of this, you don't do anything. You don't say things. You don't do things. You don't participate and you never try anything new, right? It's so challenging, this time of life. This is what most of us go through when we're like young kids. And then as a child, right, when you limit yourself and avoid all this, you miss out on a lot of things. And you know, this could also be because of how you were raised, right? Like maybe some kids bullied you, maybe your parents weren't there, you know, whatever it is, right? It ends up giving you a little bit of trauma and this messes you up, right? You following along with me? I know it's a little sensitive topic, right? But you know, childhood trauma. So because of that, you want intimacy from others. You want to feel valuable. You want to feel loved. You want friends. You know, you want girls, whatever it is, right? But you're unable to be successful doing this. And this is what leads you to like being shy, being awkward. You turn into an odd man out. Now there's a couple other factors here, right? Like the more intelligent you are, the more likely you are to overthink. And again, most overthinkers are not very good at sports or socializing, you know, because it involves teamwork and you're the odd man out. So if you're the odd man out, you just feel like you're weird around others. So you avoid anything that involves being around others. Now, if you're dumb, you're probably pretty athletic, bro. <laughs> like all the guys I know that are the most athletic, most confident, they're pretty stupid, bro. I'm not going to lie. Now, there's plenty of smart athletes, but it's more so like when you're dumb, you don't overthink stuff. You just do it. 
And most of the exercise and most of sports is literally simply just doing it. That's how you get good at it, right? So you might be wondering, okay, where are you going with this, right? It's going to make sense. Trust me. Whatever you do as a kid, you get good at it because you're so good at learning because you have extra gray matter, you know, and, and you're a kid, right? Like this is when you learn stuff. So it's very easy to pick things up really fast. And also when you're young, people are always around you complimenting you like, oh, you're doing a good job, you know, and like, I don't mean the other kids, but like your parents, the teachers, you know, oh, Jimmy's so good at baseball. You should put him in classes, you know, and the more feedback you hear, whatever it is that you hear, this reaffirms your decision to do it. And then that becomes your source of validation and status. So if people are saying, oh man, like you're so good at drawing, you're going to keep drawing. That was me. So, you know, you're, this actually becomes your identity, right? You're the kid that's good at soccer. You're the kid that's good at playing piano. I want you to comment down right by now, like what kid were you? Who were you to everybody else? Were you the guy that played soccer? You know, whatever it is, right? And your parents, they pick up on this, so they support you. And your teachers support you. And then people around you identify you as this guy. And what's crazy is this actually manifests you into getting good at something because everybody else around you is like very supportive of it. And this is normal for most kids. But what happens to certain kids Certain kids overthink and they kind of get left behind. And it's very sad, bro, but this could be you. You were one of the kids that overthought it and you didn't participate and you got left behind. And it's very sad, right? And the reason that this happens is because you don't really fit into that box that the others do. And what ends up happening is you spend most of your time alone. And when you're alone, I mean, you know, you could still play sports, but Mostly what ends up happening is you do other stuff like reading or, you know, like actual schoolwork. Because again, the kids that are lonely, they're always the smartest kids in school. Remember that. Or, you know, you could get into music or arts or writing or whatever it is, right? It could be anything. There's a million different things, really. But based on whatever you do during this time in life, this is what ends up becoming your passion, your hobby, or your thing. And as you get older... The rest of your life, I assume you probably know what I'm talking about, but if you're still really young, you might not experience this yet. You chase this. This is the thing that you bonded and attached yourself with when you were so vulnerable as a kid that it's like part of you now. You know, like there's plenty of people that are artists or they're musicians or, you know, storytellers, or whatever. And the reason why they became that and why they're so attached to that identity is because that was their coping mechanism when they were younger. I know, this might have just blown your mind, bro. Let me say it again. The people that are most successful at art, music, whatever it is, that was their thing when they were a kid. They got so ahead of others because they didn't hang out with the other kids. All they did was like neurotically just do this thing because that was their way of getting validation. Because you're a kid, you don't know any better, right? So for me, for example, when I was in middle school and high school, I loved drawing because I could do it by myself. And then I'd show people my pictures and they'd like them. I'd make these little comics, these animations, and then videos, and people would laugh. So that's how I got my love. And the whole reason I was good at this is because I did it by myself. But, you know, subconsciously, deep down, I know that what I really wanted was love and attention. I know most men won't admit it, bro. I know you don't want to admit it, but this is why we do everything, okay? It's because I'm a human, you're a human, we're both humans here, bro, all right? So with that being said, that's kind of like my theory on purpose, right? So I hope you're still here with me. If you are, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're new here, subscribe because I'm building an army of motivated, ambitious men who think outside the box. This entire video is for people to think outside the box. There's no NPCs here, okay? We don't want to be mediocre like the other 90% of people are, all right? And if you are turned on to this right now and you understand what I'm saying, share this with a good friend too because I think this will be really helpful to them. And you could be the one that breaks them out of the matrix. Now, let's get back to what we were talking about, purpose. Because of this purpose that we decide, or rather, is decided for us at a young age, as we get older, we always kind of lean back on this. That's because our reference point for, I'm not happy right now. I am thinking now about things that used to make me happy. You know, think about this statement. I used to enjoy this activity so much when I was younger is that thing that you did when you were younger. So that becomes your new escape. Like, ah, oh, I wish I could just go back to the days where I just did this. And then you hit a point in life, you know, probably like your early 20s, where you're like, what if I did do this thing, right? 
And most of us are told by our parents, you know, you got to go to school, you got to get a degree, get a job. And we do because it's pretty good advice. It worked for them. They didn't have the same opportunity we do, right? So it was really good advice for them because, you know, you can't be an artist if you don't have any money, right? So you do need to work and you need to go to school because your parents are worried you're going to be a deadbeat. And if you don't do something with your life, you're going to stay basically like a man child your whole life. So anyways, what you do is you go to school, you get a skill, a good paying job, whatever, and you're becoming an adult now. And then what happens is you experience a little bit of success in this. Maybe you graduate, maybe you work a couple years in a certain industry, whatever it is, right? And you spend your early 20s, sometimes all the way up until your 30s, doing this job. And maybe you do a couple different jobs, but you know, you're a working adult. You're playing the game now, the game of life. But what happens is a few years into this, unless you really like what you do, deep down, there's still a part of you that wants to do something else. Or for most of you, be someone else. You literally want to restart your life as somebody else because you do not enjoy your current identity. Yeah, bro. It gets deep, right? And you'll try to talk yourself out of pursuing this thing that you actually want to because it's scary. We don't want to do something that's scary. So you tell yourself, well, there's no money in it or oh, I'm too old now. Like think of all the people that make threads online like, oh, I'm 30. Should I go back to school? The idea that they're even making that thread, man. Like, you know what I'm talking about. The other one I always hear is, oh, I'm so busy, man. Oh, I need to pay my bills. You know, it's, it's bullshit, bro. It really is. But deep down, a part of you really wants to do that thing still. And you like really, really wish that you did things differently with the information that you know now. Because now you know what to do, right? Like I'm thinking about all the things I could have done differently if I knew then what I do now. But you didn't know what you knew now. So there's no way you could have done that. Okay, so don't be so hard on yourself, first of all. Now, there are these other people that we haven't talked about yet. I like to call these guys mad lads, okay? They're just mad, and these guys will just risk everything, okay? Maybe they're dumb, like they're literally too dumb to know the risks, or, you know, maybe they come from money, their parents allow them to, like, take big risks. But usually they just have some kind of mad tenacity to them. They're just different, bro, like built different, as they say. And this was kind of me a little bit. I was a little autistic, so I took massive risks, right? But you always hear about these guys like this online. And these are the guys that you hear about that like are madly successful now, but they came from like a really weird situation, right? So like they dropped out of high school, you know, they're working part-time jobs. They were like in debts, you know, semi-homeless, like you're sleeping in a car, they failed at everything and then like they made this one SoundCloud track and it just went viral and they got a record deal at 22 and now they're famous, right? You know when you go on Instagram and you see like those motivation clips? I heard this clip from Steve Harvey and he's a really famous comedian. He was sleeping in a car, showering at the YMCA, homeless at the age of 28, just trying to get things going in his career and he was like out of money, he had nothing to do and then he finally hit his big break. And you always hear about these like super inspiring come from behind stories, right? Like, you know, like, the, and it's not always just in your 20s or 30s. Like there's other guys that were literally like a cook in a kitchen till the age of 45. And then they became an actor. You know what I mean? So there are different timelines that we're all on. But the point I'm making is those guys are the same as the first group I just described. They're still humans. They're still people that want to do what they want for a living. But what happens is especially if you're an overthinker, you want more of life. You want that love. You want that validation that you missed out on during your childhood. And your body kind of messed up. You know, you had no idea what you're doing, right? So like it didn't give you a clear path, A, B, C, D. That didn't work for you when you were a kid. You couldn't fit in. You couldn't fit into the box. So you overthink. And your coping mechanism for overthinking was being, you know, specifically good at one specific thing. One talent, one skill, writing, painting, art, whatever it is. Like, if you didn't have childhood trauma, you probably wouldn't be watching this video right now. You'd be on a construction site, drinking a coffee, enjoying the ride home, listening to the radio, to your house out in the countryside, and you got like your same girl you've been dating 10 years, and you're really happy, right? But you're not. You're an artist. That's why you're here right now. Artist, yeah, let's call it that. And artists are interesting. They stick out from other boring people. And, you know, due to confirmation bias, you see these people everywhere. 
Like I'll give you an example of confirmation bias. When you walk down the street, women that are attractive to you, they stand out immediately, but all the others, you just kind of like they blend in. You don't even know they exist, right? That's what boring people are like. Artists stick out. And most artists are intelligent people. But deep down, you know that they missed out on something and that they really want to fulfill that need, that thing. And, you know, like they go to sleep and they fantasize like, oh, one day I'm going to make this movie. And then, you know, you'll see. They'll all, they'll believe me now. <laughs> like we all have that fantasy of like getting revenge on the person that was mean to us in high school, you know. And most artists, they actually do that. <laughs> so like I, I know I got you hyped up right now. The next part might not make sense at first. All right. But I haven't let you down so far. Right. All right. We're going to keep going. But I just want to say it's going to get a little bit crazy here. OK. Ooh, did move, huh? This might sound random, but I want to talk about exercise. Don't lose me, bro, please. <laughs> exercise is great for this. And I'll explain why. Exercise is great because when you want to do something big, like let's say you want to be an actor in a movie. That's what I always tell you guys about. But you haven't got your demo reel done yet. You know, maybe you're not the best actor. You've auditioned for a couple things, but you haven't got any good roles yet. You're saving up money so that you can go to LA. You know, you're working in like a, a bar and then you go there and you know, you're like, you're just grinding, grinding, but it doesn't really work out. So you got to go back home and you go back home and you see all the people around you, right? Your friends. And they're starting to like, you know, settle down in relationships. They got a big boy job, you know, whatever the story is, you know, whatever it is, the thing you're trying to do. Like I just said acting because that's my thing, but maybe it's music or starting a software company for you. But basically, you, you feel super behind and it makes you question everything. It makes you question what's in here. So imagine this, right? You do know deep down that gut feeling inside your stomach is that one day you will be successful. That small part of you does know that you will be successful. Nobody else does, but you do. The problem is the way our brains are set up is to overthink. So our mind is going like, you know, 100 miles per second or 100 miles per hour, whatever. But what's happening is you're going 100 miles per second in a 50 zone. So you're basically going to like hyper speed, fantasizing like, all right, well, I'm going to have this actor in my movie and then this guy's going to write it and like this is going to, the guy's going to do the music. Or if you're a musician, you know, like, uh, you know, I'm going to have this person feature on my track. This guy's going to play piano and then this guy's going to be the producer and then we're going to do this for like the album cover and like you have this whole thing thought out, right? Like you have all the pieces put together and that's because you're going 100 miles per hour in your brain. Or maybe it's just me and I'm talking to nobody right now. <laughs> but basically the way I look at this is like, it's like your brain is driving but your body isn't even behind the wheel. You can't physically work on it so your brain mentally tries to like solve the problem of doing it because it seems real in your head. What you need to do, I know this sounds crazy, what you need to do is you need to go the speed limit. And I don't mean follow limits like, you know, stay in the box because you must go 100 miles per hour when it's time to go 100 miles per hour or even more. But right now, you're in a school zone, bro, okay? The speed is like 40. Why do you need to be going 100 miles per hour in a school zone? I hope that analogy didn't mess this up because I, I hope it makes sense. It makes sense to me. You know, what I'm saying is your brain is going faster than everything else around you. So even though if you go like 50 miles per hour, you'll eventually get there. Your brain is going 100. So for example, let's say for the sake of this example, you wrote a script because you want to be like me. You want to write movies one day. First, you got to get the script then you got to rewrite it a couple times, edit it, make sure it's good. And then before you send it anywhere, you need to get feedback. So you got to ask some other people to look at it, make some changes. And then you email it to a bunch of agents. They don't answer. So then you send it to more people. Months, maybe a year goes by. Finally, you get an agent. He reads it. He's like, all right, I'm interested. But the agent's not that good. So nothing happens. Okay, you got to get another agent. And then that agent is good. So he sends it to a couple other people. A couple of them hit him back. He's like, yo, I got some meetings. You know, I'm going to go pitch it. Nothing happens. A couple more months go by and, you know, next thing you know, finally, someone's like, yeah, we like this, but now we need to get some money. Go to the studio, go to that studio. I hope you're still following along with this analogy. I think it's going to make a lot more sense in a minute, bro. So just keep following along, right? Finally, everything works, okay? You get what you wanted. But guess what? The whole process took three years. You were ready and you were right 
three years ago. As soon as you finished writing that script, you already were ready. You knew that you were good. But you had to wait three years of jumping through hoops and bullshit, right? So during those three years, you're on the edge of your seat. Your brain is going a million miles per second. But finally, after three years, it happens. And all of that overthinking and going 100 miles per hour in your head was not useful at all. So basically what you did is you just kind of tortured yourself for years because you were so ready to go, but you had to wait for everybody else. And that's what life is like. Sometimes you have to wait for your friends. Sometimes you have to wait for your boss or your family members. Sometimes you have to wait for society. They don't get it. They don't know what you know. But in the process, since you're going 100 miles per hour, everybody else doesn't believe you yet. You start to question yourself. And when you start to question yourself, now you're getting wobbly behind the wheel. You know those videos? You know what I'm talking about. Those guys on a motorcycle, they're ripping. And then all of a sudden, they're just like, and then they lose it, bro. And they wipe out. Okay. And what happens is, for the sake of this analogy, you start to go a little crazy. And you think, maybe I'm delusional. And this is where people second guess themselves. And they quit. Like, when you're an innovator, things take a while. A good example of this is, Steve Jobs. He was like, guys, everybody's going to want a personal computer one day. And everyone's like, you're fucking crazy, Steven. No way. Why would anybody want a big computer in their living room? Why would they even need to use it that much? You know? And then he was right. So his brain was probably going fast, like 100 miles per hour. And he's like, everybody else is on a bicycle. I'm in a car. What a bunch of idiots. And that could have driven him mad. So what I'm saying is that whatever you believe in and are working towards, you're right. You literally are correct and you know what you're doing is going to work. And sometimes you find yourself in a situation where your brain is going so fast that everything around you is so slow in comparison. Like you just made the best thing ever, but nobody cares. You know, I have a couple scripts now. They're burning a hole in my pocket because they're like a great movie, a great TV series, but I can't do anything with them right now. So literally, even though I'm sitting on gold, nobody cares. But why? Well, they don't understand yet. So like the same way that you torment yourself and you even talk yourself out of things like, wow, you know, this thing's not even that good after all because nobody likes it. The truth is you're going faster than them. They aren't at your speed. All right. Now you're caught up to speed. Okay. You know what I'm saying. So what's the secret? And I know this is going to trigger you a little bit, okay? But please, just stay, stay with me, okay? The secret is an hour of intense exercise in the morning. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know. Don't worry. It's going to make sense. When you exercise, it lets you go 100 miles per hour. In fact, you can go harder than 100 miles per hour when you exercise. You can go like 200 miles per hour, 300, because... What you're doing is you're using your energy to go as fast as you can. Not your brain, but your physical body and mind. You can't put this energy towards your goal or your art because you're waiting on other people. But when you're exercising, you have nobody you have to wait on. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody. It's just you. And these are actually more similar than you think, but we categorize them in different places for some reason, right? Like if your goal, your goal is simply a mission that is being programmed to be completed by your brain. But your brain manages everything else too. Your brain doesn't just manage, you know, like that big dream you're working on. It also manages when you're hungry, when you're tired, you know, stuff like that. And your brain is connected to your body and your brain responds very well and releases feel-good chemicals that calm you down when you activate it the right way. Think of the most intense flow state or clarity you've ever had. You know, like post not clarity. When you exercise, it adjusts how you're feeling. It adjusts your speed for you. So if you're going 100 miles per hour and you're living in a 50 mile per hour world, you need to slow down your brain to match the world around you. And I don't mean it in a bad way as in like dumb yourself down. But what I mean is you got to calm down because you might not make it if your brain just keeps going so fast, right? This is burnout. Think about it like an oil check. Your vehicle will literally break down and be unusable if you don't maintain it. You're spinning your wheels. So the best way to solve this problem is to have a heavy exercise session. 
this is what I just did. I had a heavy exercise session and it was so crystal clear to me because I was doing deadlifts, squats. I was doing all these back rows and shrugs and heavy weights. And I was pushing so physically hard with my body. It's like, if only everybody else pushed as hard as I did with my body, that thing takes three years. I would have done it today, right? You know what I mean? Like when your brain is going super fast, you can't just like spiritually telepathically send brain signals to other people to like, you know, for the script example, like bzz, it's ready. Bzz. Oh, they just read my script right away. Oh, they just buy my product. They already know all the value. You know, whatever it is you're working on, right? You can't just telepathically communicate to them. You have to wait for them. But physical weights, like li lifting weights, you can let all your energy into that weight. All the energy in your head, all the energy in your body, waiting on other people to get your thing done, it's just gonna bounce back and forth in your head. But you can let that energy out into the weights and the exercise. And when you do this, it actually allows you to speed up temporarily because you know, you're going so hard that it forces you to slow down because your body gets calm because you use it properly. Your body releases endorphins and adrenaline and all of a sudden it relaxes you. And instead of thinking emotionally 100 miles per hour, you think logically. I don't need to go 100 miles per hour. I don't need to stress out and overuse my head when it's not doing me any good. I can go 50 right now. And then it's like, wait a second. Instead of my brain just using up all these miles, why don't I just decide to do what I want with them? Those extra 50 miles I got, I'll start writing another script. I'll start another job. I'll start working on something else. Or I can just bank them for later. Just literally keep that energy for another time. Because what happens is most people get so caught up in their own head, they never make it to where they're supposed to go. And exercise allows you to slow it down. Now, as I was working out, I actually had so much clarity that I wrote it down, whatever I was experiencing. So I have it on my phone here. I'm gonna read it right off to you. Exercise lets you let your frustration out for not being able to be where you want to in life in a therapeutic way. Life is too slow for most men. We wanna go 120 miles per hour in a 60 mile per hour zone. But sometimes we must wait for others to be ready, as in what we want to do in the future, what we're ready for. Exercise lets you go 120 until you slow back down to 60 until it's time to ramp back up again. All right? So yeah, instead of going 120 in your head, go 120 into some dumbbells, bro. Go 120 into a punching bag or running around the track and field, you know, whatever it is, bro. And then once you do that for a while, your body will be like, you know what? Why are we going 120? We don't need to, bro. We can pace ourselves. You're good, bro. Just let's go 60 for a while. Why are we burning all this extra energy going nowhere when it's actually damaging us? And doing this, to put it simply, just calms you the fuck down and lets you go, you know what? It is gonna happen one day. I am going to get there. So I know there's a lot of writers, actors, comedians, YouTubers, people you look up to that don't work out because I'm thinking, oh, you're probably looking for a way out here. You're probably, oh, well, Denmo, not everybody does this. They look like shit, let's be honest. But that's because it's hard, it's painful. But the way I look at it, it's like, if you do one hour per day of that, then you feel good the rest of the day. It's like a really good ROI. I would rather feel like shit for one hour and then feel good for like 13 hours than I would feel shit for 13 hours. You know what I'm saying? So that's my little takeaway. The way I look at it, it's like if you're somebody with big dreams and you wanna move faster than everything else around you, you get frustrated that you haven't been able to get the progress that you want, to get the results that you want. You need to be patient because it's going to take a lot of time. But in order to like actually let you understand patience and then picture the greatness that you are going to achieve, then you need to do this, this way. You need to slow down, all right? I know you wanna ramp up at hyper speed. You wanna do anything you can do to get where you want to. But when you can't, it's frustrating because it feels like you're paralyzed in your own body, you know? You're like, I need to do this. But you're waiting on somebody else. You're waiting on everybody else. A good example is this, like when I was 19, I wanted to start a band, couldn't find a drummer. I wanted to record an album, I wanted to play live shows, I couldn't get a drummer. And finally I found a drummer and he could only jam and practice one hour a week and each time he showed up, he clearly didn't practice. So I had to reteach him the songs every single time. And this really frustrated me. I was going so fast, 
he wasn't ready. They weren't ready. And that's why I started my own thing. Maybe you have to start your own thing. This could be a lesson for you. And another thing, obviously, that'll help with this is finding others that match your speed as well. That's the secret, right? When you find other people that are moving at the same speed as you, now you don't feel so crazy. And overall, in order to get to that place, you got to exercise too. You got to do that one hour hard exercise. That will chill you out and remind you what you're working towards. Okay? Fucking A, bro. Now, if you're on the same spectrum of hyper productivity and ambition as me, I started a community of others that are like us. We're here to win. We're all winners. We're sharing wins. We're learning how to become successful socializers. We're working towards goals in business, in the gym, in art, and yes, socializing, right? Because the group is mostly based on, you know, how to get better at socializing and getting girls. But here's the secret, bro. What I teach you to do is become confident, charismatic, and good at starting social circles, making people like you, drawn towards you, networking, etc. And all of those skills directly translate into getting a girlfriend. So right now I have three courses in there, you know, social skills, self-confidence, charisma, mindset, all that stuff, how to get a girlfriend. But basically it's a community of driven, borderline psychopaths like me that want to achieve success in all aspects of life. We're all just crushing it in every way. And this is very important for you because you need a tribe of brothers to hold you accountable and motivate you. That could be the other thing holding you back. You're lonely. You're afraid to put your money where your mouth is, you know? You got all these dreams, but you're not doing the thing that is required to get to them. That could just be joining a community like this where you get held accountable, you know what I mean? You also get to talk with me three hours per week in a Q&A. So if you really need me to give you a fucking pep talk every single week, I can. And eventually I'm gonna add stuff in there about you know how to start a YouTube channel, how to make money online. So if that's what you wanna do, that'll be in there as well. All right, this might be the greatest video on my channel of all time, or maybe I'm delusional. <laughs> Only time will tell. But now that you've watched this video, you need to watch this video as well on the screen. So click this and I will see you there. Don't worry, bro. We're all gonna make it.